was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross, I like games, and today we've got some big news about the upcoming Ultimate Cup. Yeah, there's an Ultimate Cup coming, and um, things have changed. They've banned some cards, they've got a new format. Things are getting very, very interesting indeed. Now, we're talking here about the Ultimate Cup, which is happening in March and April of this year. And I think we need to start off with the news that we have got two new restricted cards and three new banned cards. Like actual, full-on banned cards. So let's start there with a card that, honestly, I don't think anyone can be that surprised about. They've gone and banned the Death X Mon from BT9 because it's seen a ridiculous amount to play. Now, one thing I do think is really important to point out here, and I do think this is really important. This is the rule for the Ultimate Cup. When I describe these as banned cards, they are banned cards. They are literally on a list headed banned cards. They have definitely been banned. But we're not talking about a forever ban or anything like that. We are talking about a ban which has come in for the Ultimate Cup. They are basically banning some cards. And it might be because they're too good. It might be because they are considering a bigger ban. I.e. extending it all the way down. Or it might be that they just want to mix up the format a bit. And it might be nothing more sinister than that. What they're actually doing is just mixing up the format and going, Hey, Death X Mon sees a bunch of play. What would happen to the format if we didn't let people use it? Because this is a great card. It's a 20 cost, which sounds huge. When you would play this card, reduce its memory cost by fee for each Digimon and Tamer your opponent has in play. So if they've got a decent board set up, this becomes a very cheap card. On play and when Digivolving, you need Digivolve 1 all of your opponent's Digimon. That's pretty harsh. Then delete all of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. Which means basically they have to have a level 6 or a level 5 with no Digivolution cards in order to actually survive. Obviously 6 or above. And at the end of your opponent's turn, once per turn, you delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest play cost. Yeah, th this is kind of ridiculous for wiping the board. It is a great card. You can understand why they might not want it out there. Now, also from BT9, they have gone and banned the Wergaruramon X Antibody. He gone. Y you're not having one copy or anything like that, ladies and gentlemen. He gone. You don't get any of them. Now, this is the one, as it's an X Antibody card, as you might expect. It did evolve as a zero cost from Wergaruramon. When Digivolving, you unsuspend it. And then if Wergaruramon or X Antibody, the option card, is in this Digimon's Digivolution cards, you return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to its owner's hand. Zero cost card that unsuspends, meaning you can get a second attack. And then you get to return a level 4 or lower Digimon to its owner's hand. Seems like the kind of card that could be very, very good. This is one that, again, has gone. But like I said a moment ago, when I say gone, I mean gone for the Ultimate Cup. I am not guaranteeing a wider ban or anything along those lines. I am telling you that right now, for this tournament, he gone. Is it going to come back? I mean, yeah. Is it going to be banned again in the future? That's an interesting question. And then we've got the Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode from BT4, which has also gone as well. Which is kind of interesting, of course. BT9, not that long ago. BT4, that's a while back. But what we've got here is a level 5 with Rush, i.e. it can attack the turn it comes into play. And on play, you can delete one of your Cerberus Mon to gain 9 memory. Of course, it is a 9 cost to play, and it's got Rush. But if you delete a Cerberus Mon, you pay 9, and then you immediately gain 9. So you haven't actually lost any memory. You've just got a Rusher into play, and that's a good thing. It doesn't matter what game you're talking about. Rush is a very good thing. So having a Rush that can potentially come in for free here, clearly a very, very good thing indeed. So these three cards have been banned. Outright banned, no ifs, buts, or maybes. They gone, ladies and gentlemen. They gone. 
But we have seen an update to the restricted list as well. The promo Granku Wagamon has been restricted. Now remember, restricted doesn't mean gone. Restricted means you can only have one copy in your deck. And now this is a card I actually love. It's a card I've played with a bunch. And actually, when I really wanted to pull this card, this was back when you got a dash pack where there were three different cards you could pull for buying starter decks. And I had exactly three of these dash packs. And I really wanted free Granku Wagamon. And even though there were three different options and only one of them was Granku Wagamon, somehow I managed to pull free Granku Wagamon out of three one card packs. And oh, that I still remember that. That was a good memory. Really wanting to pull exactly Granku Wagamon three times from the three packs and actually pulling it off. <laughs> oh, that was fun, ladies and gentlemen. That's, a, that's one of my favorite Digimon memories, honestly. Uh, for anyone that's wondering, just while I'm talking about it here, it was the Black Wall Greymon and the Metal Garurumon. They were the other two cards that were available in that one card promo pack. But why is Granku Wagamon so good? Because it's got Digiburst 2, give security attack plus 1. Simple as that. The problem is, with multiple Granku Wagamon, you can be Digiversting a lot. And then the problem with that is that you end up getting a lot of extra security attack. And we have seen this from Digimon in the past, where essentially getting extra security attack too easily is... It is something that they do want to try and rein in a little bit. And then we've got Chaos Degradation from Starter Deck 10. Now, this is actually an option card. It's a 10 cost, no, wait, 8 cost option card. There we go, from Starter Deck 10. And you place one of your opponent's Digimon face down at the top or bottom of your opponent's security. And then if you do, you trash the top card of their security. And then as a security skill, you can place one of your opponent's Digimon face down at the top or bottom of their stack. The difference there, of course, is that you're just recovering for them, though you are getting their Digimon off the field. Whereas the main one, you're just getting a Digimon out of the way. Now, one of the reasons why I think this one might be banned, same with Def Xmon as well, they are dual colour. And one of the important things about the Ultimate Cup, it is single colour deck building. Players must construct a deck and Digi-Egg deck using cards of only one colour. Multicolour cards with a matching colour are also legal for use. And then we've got the banned cards we saw a moment ago. Now this is really important because something like Chaos Degradation, for instance, that could have, or I mean it still can, but only has a one-off, it can be played in any yellow or purple deck. And the thing is, when you take this format and you make it monocolour, one of the things you then run into, and one of the potential options you run into here, is having an issue with some cards suddenly becoming good. Because you can't match colours anymore, cards that weren't that good before, all of a sudden become good. And it seems to be this is what Bandai are trying to jump in the way of, essentially. Jump in the way of this happening. But as some other people have pointed out, this does kind of ruin some cards. And I'll be honest with you, it basically ruins white cards. Not all white cards, but a lot of white cards. So take a card like Cool Boy. Cool Boy is a great card in any X antibody deck. Because when you play it, you build a top three card to your deck. Add a Digimon card with X antibody in its traits and an option card with X antibody in its traits among them to your hand. And then on your turn, when one of your Digimon Digivolves into a same level Digimon with X antibody in its traits... You can suspend this Tamer to gain a memory. It is a great Tamer. The problem is, there aren't that many white cards. And certainly in terms of X-Antibody, there really aren't that many white cards. And you're playing mono colour. So, they haven't gone and banned Cool Boy. But they've basically gone and banned Cool Boy here. Because what deck are you going to play this in? It's a great card. There are some really good mono color X antibody decks you can play. Yeah. You ain't playing Cool Boy in them, ladies and gentlemen. You ain't playing Cool Boy in them. And then we've got things like Diaboromon. Well, who's playing Diaboromon now? Now, I'm not saying anybody would have played Diaboromon anyway. That's not the point. The point is that Diaboromon is white. All the Diaboromon cards we've had so far have been white. 
The problem is, Diaboramon is essentially digivolving from black cards. And, and now that now they're all gone, ladies and gentlemen. You, you can either play, you know, take someone like Infermon, for instance. All the Infermon we've had so far are black, but all the Diaboramon we've had are white. So you can either play Diaboramon without Infermon, which you're probably not going to want to do, or Infermon without Diaboramon, which you're probably not going to want to do. And that's kind of a problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's kind of a problem. And that's the kind of thing this format is going to run into. And I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm saying it's different. It is a different deck building challenge. It is a different way to build your decks and play the game. And this is one of those things where you can be very upset about this. Or you can be very happy about this. But this is the way the format's going. What I will say is, in terms of deck building, it's a different way of deck building. It's a different challenge. I don't see any real positive or negative. What I will also say is, I know there are a lot of people out there who are clearly building for the standard format, what we're generally playing in. And I understand that for those people, what they really want to do is spend all this time deck building. They want to build up their main deck that they've tested, like the green decks I've played in the past. Like the Granky Wagamon deck, for instance. And they want to run with that deck. And all of a sudden, being forced into a monocolor deck and having to abandon the deck they've been working on for a while in the big format with the fun rules, nah. When you build those decks, you're looking forward to the big tournaments. Having a big tournament come along and being told you're not allowed to play it, I'm not a big fan of that. As a side note, they are also going to bring in mulligan rules for the Ultimate Cup. After players have placed their security and drawn their starting hand, they may review their hand and mulligan, which means placing all the cards to the bottom of your deck. Do not shuffle. Do not replace your security. Draw five new cards. You are only allowed one mulligan. Side decks are not allowed. Do remember, I've made this point before in videos. With the mulligan rules, the cards go at the bottom of your deck which means it's going to be a while before you see them again. And I do kind of like this because it means when you're deciding whether you're going to mulligan or not, you do have to build in that decision of, well, hang on a second. If I choose to mulligan, I know that I'm not getting these cards back for a little while. And that is kind of relevant. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this rules. Tell me which deck you're going to play. Tell me the impact you see. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk One Piece and other card games and all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.